students. Today we are going to continue 7.2 and we're going to learn a little bit about the structure of a gene and uh, the parts of the gene and then we're going to learn a little bit about gene expression. So we're going to start with our application um, uh, statement which says the promoter is an example of a non-coding DNA with a function. So then we need to be able to understand the difference between what is a coding sequence of DNA and what is a non-coding sequence of DNA. So um, here we have a section of DNA and that's what we call a gene. And this section of DNA contains different parts. So this gene contains different parts. We have one part that is known as the coding sequence. So that means that what um, this part of DNA that gets coded is going to undergo transcription and then is going to undergo translation. And then we have these non-coding regions. So the promoter region and the terminator region are non-coding regions. That means that even though they could get transcribed, they are not going to get translated into proteins. So that's the difference between coding sequence. So think of a coding sequence is that section of the gene that will eventually end up as a protein because it will undergo transcription and then translation. And then these terminator and promoter regions that are the non-coding regions that will, um, that will undergo transcription but will not undergo translation. So therefore will not make any proteins. Okay. Now keep in mind that here I am only showing you one gene, right? So one tiny little segment within our DNA. If you remember in the human body, we have 30,000 genes. So think of this happening 30,000 times and that's how gene expression happens in our body. So it's, it's quite remarkable actually. All right, so what is the, um, the function of this promoter region? This promoter region has um, a very important function because this is where RNA polymerase is going to attach. So remember the RNA polymerase is an enzyme that undergoes um, transcription. So RNA polymerase is going to attach to this promoter, but RNA polymerase cannot attach to any promoter unless there are transcription factors present. So think of these um, other proteins um, known as transcription factors that need to be present in order for RNA polymerase to attach to the promoter and for transcription to um, take place. Um, and then the terminator region is just a, t a, a stop region, right? So anytime RNA polymerase reaches the terminator region, that means that um, transcription is going to stop, okay? Um, don't need to worry about the mechanism of how it differs in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So pretty much this is a basic um, diagram of a section of a gene. Okay? Now the other part that you are responsible for understanding in this section is um, how transcription happens and um, remember that RNA is single-stranded, right? So this is RNA and RNA is made of made um, from DNA and but we also remember that DNA is a uh, polynucleotided so it's got two strands right it's got uh, uh, two parental strands so it when RNA gets made or when RNA gets copied it's only going to use one strand of DNA and that's what we call the antisense strand. So antisense is what gets transcribed. So an the antisense strand is the strand that is transcribed. So the way that I remember that is because I know that the word is is in the word antisense. Okay. So the antisense strand or the uh, DNA parental strand is going to make a copy of RNA. Um, the sense strand is the one that is not transcribed. Okay. Now, something interesting to remember about this. Um, DNA and how DNA makes RNA is gene-specific. So then that means that it could vary which 
portion, um, or actually it could vary which strand makes RNA depending on the gene you are looking at. So let's say that this is one particular gene here, and in this one particular gene, you're using um, the bottom parent, there, there's no top down bottom, but let's call it the bottom strand here. You're using this bottom parental strand. This is the antisense strand. And let's say that if you later move on to a different gene, um, you can then use a different the different parental strand, and you can use this top strand, and then now this top strand becomes the antisense strand. So that's what it means by um, um, transcription being gene specific within the two polynucleotide strands of DNA. Okay. All right. So now we can move on to um, the actual gene expression portion. So let me move on to that slide. And in this slide, um, let's look at some terminology here and then let's look at some pictures. So in this particular um, slide here, our general understanding is that gene expression is regulated by proteins that bind to specific base sequences in DNA. So we are going to look at these regulatory proteins. What are they and how do they bind to the DNA and how do they bind to these non-coding regions of DNA? Okay. How do they bind to these non-coding regions of DNA? So um, it says here that there's two groups of proteins that mediate binding of RNA polymerase to the promoter. So the first group of proteins are known as transcription factors, and the second group of proteins are known as regulatory proteins. So um, what do transcription factors do? Well, they form a complex with RNA polymerase at the promoter. So without these transcription factors, you would not be able to initiate transcription. Okay? And I'll show you a picture in just a moment how that happens. What about the regulatory proteins? Well, there's two types of regulatory proteins. We have the activator proteins, and then we have the repressor proteins. And what these regular protein, regulatory proteins do, um, they bind to sequences outside the promoter region. So um, these sequences outside of the promoter region are called control elements. Okay. So here we see a picture of the gene that's going to get transcribed. Here we see in green the promoter region. And then we see outside, um, outside the region of what's going to get transcribed, um, we see the, uh, um, these control elements which are outside the promoter region. Okay, So we have activator proteins and repressor proteins that can bind to these control elements. All right. Okay, so with that, let's move down to the actual picture and let's make some sense of what we're looking at. Let me move this up a little bit like so. Okay. So this is called um, differential gene expression and how it happens. So let's look at our gene, um, our, our DNA segment here. And remember that, um, let's label this again, this is the coding section of the gene, right? This is the coding segment of the gene. And then right here we have the non-coding segment. So all this is the non-coding segment. Okay. So the promoter region is non-coding and these control elements are non-coding segments. Now within the control elements, um, within the DNA, you can have regions that are called silencer regions or you have regions called enhancer regions. So this one here in pink, okay, this one here is what we call a silencer region. And I'll tell you why it's called a silencer region in just a moment. And here in yellow, we have what we call the enhancer region. So both, um, these two regions, both the silencer and the enhancer regions, 
are collectively called control elements and they happen to be outside the promoter region within the non-coding region of DNA. Okay, so let's look at what happens now. So um, let's say that I'm a skin cell, right? And let's say that I need to um, generate moderate levels of a certain protein. So if I'm the DNA, then I'm going to need to take that DNA and, I, and I'm going to first need to transcribe it and then I'm going to need to translate it into proteins and then I'm going to end up with moderate levels of proteins, right? So in order for that to happen, what do I need? Well, I am going to need um, for this uh, gene coding region to get transcribed first and in order for that to happen I'm going to need RNA polymerase. So that is the enzyme that is responsible for transcription, right? But remember that I told you before that RNA polymerase cannot function unless there are transcription factors. So we call these little circles here that are attached to um, the RNA polymerase, we call those little circles uh, transcription factors. And here they're called basal transcription factors because they're found in the skin. Okay, so once the transcription factor is attached to RNA polymerase, RNA polymerase is going to do its thing and it's going to transcribe that gene coding region of DNA. Okay, all right, but what about if you are a liver cell? And because you are a liver cell, you need to make high levels of a particular, particular protein. So then that means that you are going to need an activator protein. And this activator protein right here, okay, that activator protein is going to need to attach itself to an enhancer region on DNA. So remember that this enhancer region is a control element as well. So what's going to happen is when, once the activator protein attaches to the enhancer region, um, that is going to um, pretty much uh, increase the rate of transcription. So it's kind of like RNA polymerase working faster, right? And it's going to um, it's going to create this complex with the transcription factors plus the RNA polymerase, and now you're going to get transcription at higher levels. Um, and then you're going to get translation at higher levels. So you're going to get a, a lot of a particular protein. Okay. Now, the opposite happens when you want very low levels of a protein. That means that the gene needs to get transcribed at very low levels, so kind of slowly. Um, remember that this is, when I say low levels, I mean a, a, a low rate, a high rate and a low rate. So if you're a brain cell nucleus, then you're going to need, um, and, and you need, for example, low levels of proteins inside your cells, um, then what's going to happen? Well, now within um, the, the DNA uh, non-coding region, you have a silencer. And repressor proteins that are type of regulatory proteins, right, they are going to attach to this repressor on the non-coding region of DNA. And then what does that mean? That means that um, uh, this 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 complex here right is going to um, take its time to act on this RNA polymerase and transcription factor complex and then that means that transcription is going to happen but it's going to happen at a very low level okay and in one of the activities that we're going to do in class we're going to see how these repressor repressor and activator proteins and these um, control elements in DNA also play a factor in cancer and um, we're going to learn that in in one of our in one of our activities okay so again um, th these this is what we call differential gene expression or how quickly or a, a rate at which um, genes get transcribed and they're all regulated by these regulatory proteins, right? So these activator proteins and these repressor proteins are what we call regulatory regulatory proteins, RPs, okay? 
All right. Um, what else? And this is what I consider to be the fun part. Okay. So here we, I just talked about this a little bit, but here we have an awesome, awesome diagram just showing you um, exactly how it happens. So here you see the enhancers and the silencers, um, which are, again, these are non-coding regions in DNA, right? Non-coding regions in DNA. Um, how they work with the regulatory protein. So here you see the enhancer non-coding region of DNA working with the activator protein and here the silencer region of DNA working with the repressor protein. So um, uh, notice here send, uh, notice here that DNA can sometimes bend like so, right? And that's something that we forget to think about how DNA is just a three-dimensional molecule. So here we see the enhancer region on DNA, and here we see the activator. So the activator is in yellow, okay? When the activator attaches to the enhancer region, right, that is going to allow for RNA polymerase to um, form a complex with these transcription factors. So these are the transcription factors here. Transcription factor, transcription factor, transcription factor. Um, which are working with the promoter proximal elements. Um, so all of this are uh, elements within the promoter because sometimes you don't have just one promoter, you can have various promoters. And sometimes the promoter can be um, proximal, which means that it's close um, to, um, to the to the um, gene that needs to get transcribed and sometimes they're distal, which means that sometimes they're far away. So here you see because an activator is attached to an enhancer, right, RNA polymerase gets activated. So here's the check mark, um, which means that um, this region of DNA is going to get transcribed. And um, you, you're not responsible for knowing this, but this is what we call a TATA box. And the TATA box is the initiation site of transcription, just FYI. Um, other things involved here that you don't need to go into, but there's also architectural um, DNA bending proteins that allow for the DNA to kind of bend so that all of these um, regulatory proteins and, um, and, and enzymes uh, can work in conjunction as a complex, which is actually pretty cool. Okay. And here you see the silencer, the silencer region on DNA, right? And here we see the repressor attaching to the silencer region, which means that everything is going to be silenced, or at least transcription is going to happen at a slow rate. So here you see that RNA polymerase is not really working um, adequately. So here you see an X, right? So that means that whenever this complex of RNA polymerase plus the promoter and the transcription factors take place, it's not going to be a complex that is going to allow for a um, fast rate of transcription. It's actually going to be a slow rate of transcription. Okay, so um, that's that's all for today. Um, we are going to. Um, in another lesson, look at how the environment plays a role in gene expression. Um, we're going to see how sometimes DNA can be methylated or uh, acetylated and um, how that plays a role in how some genes get expressed as well. But that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it.